Hi and welcome to my channel and this monthly freezer meal prep video. By the end of this video I'll have about a third of the dinners ready to go for the rest of the month. I'll be making a tomato as well as a green bean stew just like my mom taught me. A balsamic beef, a beef goulash as well as a Mongolian beef. I'll then be moving on to some mince recipes where I'll be making a chili con carne, enchilada and lasagna and then I'll finish up it off with a couple of pasta dishes I'll be making my cheesy bacon pasta and then last but not least my cheesy sun-dried tomato and basil pasta if this sounds like something you'd be interested in please stick around let's get started you take my life for granted say a bunch of stuff you never as you can see here, loads and loads of vibrant color, different options of veggies here that we'll be using for all these meals. Um, the first thing I'm going to be doing is prepping the tomatoes. So for this, what I'll be doing is what I would call topping and tailing the tomato. So I make a little cross at the top of the tomato as well as the bottom, and then I pour some boiling water on them. Um, that's how my mom taught me, and that's how I do it. We'll be using these tomatoes for both the green bean stew as well as the tomato stew. I also just want to preface that I did do exactly this with 14 tomatoes prior to this video that I am using for um, the tomato stew but that's all I've sort of pre-prepped um, for these meals. I'm also chopping up loads and loads of peppers. On this occasion I had orange, yellow and red but that just happened to be what my store had on sale. You can use any color um, peppers that you have on hand. I'll also be grating as well as chopping some carrots because I think it is important to um, give vegetables in their sort of original state so that your kids get used to the textures and flavors. Although I do hide vegetables, as you will see here, I am grating some carrots, I am grating some um, mushrooms that I'll be hiding in with the minced beef and the kids will never know that it's there. But that's more to add extra veggies to their meal as opposed to sort of trying to trick them. I'm also finely dicing about a kilo of green beans and this is obviously for the green beans use so I'm just taking the ends off and then chopping it in around one centimeter rings. I'll also be dicing up several onions. Now I always mix red onion and white onion because I just think it gives the dishes sort of more depth of flavor but feel free to use one or the other in most of these dishes it doesn't really make that much of a difference I will be using a food processor today because it is just so much easier I'm um, just taking into consideration the sheer volume of grating and chopping that I need to do so um, that's definitely maybe something that if you have it in your kitchen that I would recommend that you use as you can see here um, Liam wanted to help again this is his first time actually peeling carrots and he loved it he probably peeled about 12 carrots so I'm super proud of him um, and that is basically all the prepping that we'll be doing today um, before we move on to actual cooking and then mixing of ingredients. first dish I'm prepping here is a tomato stew so again I have around 14 tomatoes that I have removed the skin one onion and then I'm adding in some lamb neck but you can use stewing lamb as well I'm adding some salt pepper a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and a tablespoon of sugar just to take the edge of the sourness away from the tomatoes I am actually putting this in a slow cooker bag because it'll go from the freezer into the slow cooker for around um, three to four hours on high at this point you will see there's actually quite a lot of liquid so I pour everything into a stovetop um, sort of pot and while it reduces I add around three to four potatoes that I chop into one centimeter dice you'll find that by the time that the stew is thickened the potatoes will be cooked and I just serve it with rice I do however recommend eating it with white rice as opposed to brown rice although I do love brown rice but I just think stews go better with white Even though it's kind of
now that all the veggies have been prepped, diced and grated, we can finally move on with assembling the rest of these meals. So the first one I'll be working on is the green bean stew, which again is actually my mom's recipe. So I just do as I'm told, because why would I ever mess with perfection? So the first thing I did there is just add in the keto of green beans, the three tomatoes with the skins removed, and then about one onion, as well as the lamb neck. In terms of flavorings, it's very simple, salt, pepper, and about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now again, when I cook this, I will be doing exactly the same as I did with the tomato stew. So it goes in the slow cooker for around three to four hours on high, at which point you'll notice there is quite a lot of liquid, which is absolutely fine. You take the contents of the slow cooker, put it on the stove top, and while it reduces, I add in two potatoes as well as two sweet potatoes for this one, again in around one centimeter dice. And by the time the stew is reduced and nice and thick, the potatoes will be cooked. And I also serve this on white rice this was actually my favorite meal and probably still is my favorite meal from childhood so definitely one to try out moving on to the mongolian beef where i need 700 grams of diced beef some ginger corn flour some um garlic i actually use the chili and garlic sauce in this some soy sauce some onions any sweetener you can use candorol or sugar um, and I add in some grated carrots and a little bit of onion as well. I will have the details of the recipes linked down be below with sort of more exact measurements. But essentially, you add all of these ingredients as well as a little bit of water straight to the pan, mix it through, freeze it. You take it out when you are ready to cook it, make sure it's defrosted and it goes in the oven at around 160 for three hours and it is really delicious. When you serve it, just um, add over some fresh red chili. Obviously that's optional depending on whether um, you have little kids that are sensitive to heat, but definitely add over some spring onions and some sesame seeds. It really is one to try, really, really nice. goulash where again I need 700 grams of diced beef. I'm adding in an onion, three medium carrots actually cut into buttons but I'm adding in a little bit more um, of the grated carrots just to get a little bit of extra veg in there. Um, I'm adding in about three um, bell peppers that was chopped. I wouldn't recommend that you use green in this on this dish. I would recommend either ideally the red but yellow or orange is also fine. I'm adding in two garlic cloves that are crushed three tablespoons of tomato paste, as well as two tablespoons of paprika, and last but not least, a tin of tomato, and then salt and pepper to taste. Yes. Moving on to the balsamic beef, where again I need the, um, the diced beef, some garlic, some corn flour, brown sugar, thyme and parsley, a beef stock cube, some tomato paste, of course the balsamic vinegar, some diced peppers, an onion, and of course carrots. Again, I'm using both the batons as well as some grated carrot, just to get a little bit of extra veg in there. So we'll do exactly the same as we did with the other beef recipes. Just literally mix everything through and freeze it. And when you're ready to cook, just take it out, let it defrost, and then put it in the oven at around 160 for three hours. I mean, it's not recommended, but I have put it slightly higher for a shorter period of time, and that was absolutely fine as well. So moving on to the mince base recipes and the first one we'll be working on is the chili con carne. Now this is actually the recipe that I make whenever anyone is what I would call pre-sick. So you know when people aren't really sick yet but you know it's coming. I just feel like this recipe is so packed with so many veggies and so much vitamin C because of all of those peppers that it is a winner in my book. So as you saw there I add a little bit of oil. I used rapeseed oil but feel free to use whatever oil you have on hand. Um, a kilo of lean steak 
statements. I added in two onions finely diced um, and two packets of the chili con carne spice mix. Of course, feel free to use your own um, spices and mix it up as you see fit using, you know, paprika, cumin, chili, etc. Um, I just find it more convenient to do it um, this way. I'm also adding in some grated carrots and some grated mushrooms, which my kids have absolutely never noticed in this recipe, um, followed by two tins of the um, diced tomatoes and I'm actually filling those tins up with water just to make sure I get all of the tomatoes out of there um, and adding that to the mix as well as well as about a cup of red lentils so while that simmers I'm going to move on to the meat base for the lasagna so starting off again with the oil two onions exactly the same thing the mince the carrots and the mushrooms and in terms of spices we are just using some mixed herbs um, and some salt and pepper now for the lasagna i only actually need about half of um, this base the other half i just froze as is when i'm ready to use the other half what i'll do is i'll pull it out defrost it add some water and then add some gravy granules i tend to use onion gravy granules that'll create a little bit of a sauce um, and then i will add some peas and corn to it and then on a in a separate pot i will make mash um, top the the meat base with the mash and you have a cottage pie well a healthier version of a cottage pie in my opinion so there's another little meal hiding in here that I didn't actually do on this day the next thing I'm working on is my white sauce now I do have another video where I explain how I make the white sauce in detail which I will link up here but essentially you melt butter, add flour, add milk, keep on stirring and then add cheese at some point. Um, in terms of spices, I just use salt and pepper and some mixed herbs. So fairly quick and easy. Nothing more to say, let's just waste away. One more time is all we need. A bit of truth to face, not so now that all these flavors in the chili has nicely blended together and it's reduced, I'm adding in two tins of drained kidney beans and then we are ready. The first thing I'm working on is the enchilada. So I'm spraying the bottom of the dish just to make sure nothing sticks. And I'm taking tortillas, filling it with the chili, lining it up in a neat little line, putting some chili over the top, covered with cheese, and then the dish is absolutely done. When we're ready to eat it, I will probably defrost it and then put it in the oven covered for probably around 45 minutes at 180. At that point, I will take the top off and just finish it off for 10 or 12 minutes, just until the cheese is nice and bubbly. The remainder of the chili, I will just freeze as is. And then when we're ready to eat it, I will obviously defrost it and heat it through and serve it with rice and all the normal toppings. Moving on to lasagna, basically just a layering job, isn't it? So I have that meat base and I have my cheese sauce and I'm doing, starting off with the meat so that nothing sticks to the bottom, but it's meat, lasagna sheets, cheese sauce, cheese, lasagna sheets, meat. Um, repeat until you finish off with the white sauce on top covered with cheese and then I tend to put um, mixed herbs as well as paprika over the top not only does this give you um, really great flavor but the color actually um, looks really nice as well so maybe that's something you might want to consider the next thing I'm working on is just those final two pasta dishes so what I've done here is fried off two onions um, I used clearly um brown as well as red onions as well as a couple of garlic cloves were fried off with that onion just with some salt and pepper and mixed herbs um, and then that's the same cheese sauce that I used for my lasagna so I cooked off 400 grams of dry macaroni um, obviously this yields a little bit more but I tend to think that 200 grams per dish is sufficient for my family and the first thing I did is used half of the onion mix the onion garlic mix half of the remaining of the cheese sauce and then the pasta and then cut up about seven um, pieces of bacon finely mix it through and that's the first dish done and then the last one that we're working on is a sun-dried tomato and basil so as you can see there um, I have the pasta the cheese sauce I'm adding in about a handful of basil and then around six to seven sun-dried tomato halves that I'm also just dicing finely and you mix all of that together um, and put it in the freezer and when you're ready to eat it defrost it 
put it in the oven for around 45 minutes at around 175 to 180 and the dish is ready again i kind of bake it covered and then finish it off uncovered you can either just serve it as is or you can add additional cheese over the top and make sure that cheese goes nice and bubbly and golden brown um, and that is also absolutely delicious. That is everything for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and that, that it gave you some inspiration. I am so happy and I feel so much more relaxed knowing that for a third of the rest of the month, I do not have to cook. So that really is a win in my book. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to um, the channel. It really does help me out a lot and it really means more to me than you'll ever know. I really hope to see you in my next one. Bye. I'm a sucker for your love